April. Today is the 29th of April. Hey, do you have makeup that could accentuate my pecs? It's not really how makeup works, Tom. Yeah, I, no, I know. I just, um, hey, when are we on? It's uh, Tom, we're live. We're live now? Yes. Yes. 29th, it, hang on, no, it's... By pecs, I meant the pecs on my cheeks, you know, cheek pecs. Tonight on The Roast, the ICAC investigations lead to more resignations and Scott Morrison can no longer guarantee safety on Manus Island. But first, Mark Humphreys has the headlines. Clive Palmer, the man who, if you say his name three times in the mirror, he makes you a political candidate, is planning to sue Queensland Premier Campbell Newman for defamation. So let this be a lesson. There's only one person allowed to make Clive Palmer look bad. You're ahead of me. It's Clive Palmer. The controversy started when Campbell Newman had this to say about Mr Palmer. This is a guy who tried to buy a government. My government. And we said, go away. We said, we're not for sale. Not for sale? Last I checked, Australia was open for business. But Clive's not happy with Newman's accusations. In fact, I believe we have footage of him reacting to those claims. <laughs> Newman! Of course, if Clive had bought the Queensland government, I'm not sure how that would have gone down with Mrs Palmer. Bills, bills, bills. Dinosaur Park, Titanic 2, Queensland government. Oh, honey, what's this for a Queensland government? <gasps> Clive? But spare a thought for Clive, he does sound hurt by Newman's comments. The things he said about me were very scandalous and untrue. I hear you, Clive. Don't you hate it when someone does that? Rupert Murdoch's wife, Wendy Dung, is a Chinese spy. And since Wendy hasn't sued, I'm guessing either she doesn't watch the Today Show, good choice, Wendy, or she is a Chinese spy. <laughs> Now, this isn't the first time Clive has sued or threatened to sue someone. In fact, he can't get enough of it. He once listed litigation as a hobby in his biography for Who's Who. Gee, now I feel boring for listing tennis. But this court case with Campbell might not be so fun, with Clive suggesting that a settlement is unlikely. Do you think you'll kiss and make up with Mr Newman? Well, he's, a, he's a wholly unattractive person, you know. I uh, wouldn't want to kiss him any time. Too bad for you, Clive. He's all yours, Irwin ladies. Also, if you thought this row was just about Palmer versus Newman, Clive has some bad news for you. The taxpayers are going to cop it. And the Premier will, of course, use your money, taxpayers' money, to defend himself in this case. Yes, blame the Premier for these costs, not the billionaire starting the case whose hobby is litigation. In the words of someone tasting Hollandaise sauce, that's a bit rich. For the roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Thank you, Mark. Well, first up tonight, the ongoing ICAC investigations have, like some sort of evil sentient orgasmatron, claimed another scalp. The latest head to go was New South Wales Upper House Liberal MP and person you just learnt existed, Marie Fakara, seen here retreating into her bushes like some sort of disgraced fern. Ms Fakara has now stepped aside pending the conclusion of these hearings. And coming just two weeks after Barry O'Farrell's sudden resignation and hot on the heels of years of Labor corruption allegations, ICAC looks like it's taking down the whole government. Remember in Terminator when the humans made Skynet and it was great, but then it started killing people and then everyone had to appear in front of the ICAC inquiries and robots started resigning their parliamentary positions? Well guys, it's happening for reals this time. Corruption allegations in New South Wales first considered a Labor Party crisis, are proving just as damaging to the Liberal Party. And potentially far more embarrassing, because in July last year, when Labor was coming under fire, the Liberals were loud and proud in their support of the hearings, with Tony Abbott making use of his mandate to smack down, tweeting, ICAC, hashtag, this is Labor. He would have added, and Liberal, but the remaining 123 characters were under an efficiency review. But given the hearings are now investigating alleged corruption within the Liberal Party, there must have been at least a few coalition members who weren't quite as enthusiastic about publicly naming and shaming Labor. We are going to be loud in our disgust of Labor corruption. Yeah. Are we? Yeah. We're going to make them up. Yeah. With a slap on the wrist. <laughs> I'm willing to stake the party's integrity on this. The New South Wales Liberals are corruption free. Yeah! Corruption free. They're here for me. What? Well, well, good riddance. And if anyone else here is corrupt, there's the door. Yeah, don't let it hit you on the way out. <laughs> yeah, finally, New South Wales Liberals are corruption free. Oh, yep. <sighs> finally. New South Wales Liberals are corruption free. But you know, the one thing that stands out in this whole debacle is that the allegations of corruption are all just kind of, I don't know, lame. 
The idea was to set up a sham business which would pretend to provide services to political donors and issue fake invoices for those services. In return, the donors got political favours. Whoa! Corrupt payments, political favours, money laundering. This is nothing new. Where's the pizzazz? The slush fund under investigation is called 8x5, which incidentally is also the dimensions of the prison cell these people may soon find themselves in. It also won the worst name for anything prize, narrowly beating out Unobtainium and Mercedes Corby. The other entity under scrutiny, the Free Enterprise Foundation, is trying so desperately to sound vanilla and nondescript, they might as well have called themselves the Centre for Organic Rice and Rich Unfiltered Peppermint Trading. And when Tim Colmer, who operated 8x5, tried to make a false allegation against the head of Sydney Water, he signed off in an email to his brother with, yay, black ops. Now listen, Nixon, if you're trying to lie low while ruining other people's careers, A, don't leave a paper trail, and B, try not to sound like an eight-year-old who just got a video game about killing people for Christmas. Honestly, if politicians were things you could buy, and based on these ICAC hearings that does seem possible, why don't we all just chip in and buy off a politician, then pay them to not be corrupt? We could call this shady new arrangement doing your job. We'll be right back. Hey, why don't you jump on Twitter and tell us if you've ever set up a slush fund? What did you call that slush fund? Did you call it, I've never set up a slush fund because I'm a good person? We'd love to hear about it. At The Roast TV or hashtag Roast TV. Well, next up, Four Corners has aired an investigation into the February riots at the Manus Island Detention Centre. Immigration Minister Scott Morrison, who in his former role as Head of Tourism Australia, already demonstrated his ability to deter people coming here with the Where the Bloody Hell Are You campaign. So where the bloody hell are you? Before then transitioning to his ah. Oh, you turned up campaign has backed away from guarantees that he can protect asylum seeker safety with the ABC reporting it was difficult to ensure safety at all times and that's okay because people don't need to be safe all the time it's just when things are dangerous but even Mr Morrison knows he can do better saying it is absolutely my aspiration it is my commitment to ensure uh, that uh, these places are safe but it is difficult I think to do that in every instance and like anyone dedicated to improving their life, he has started by hanging an aspirational poster of Scott Morrison above his desk. But you know what, don't be too hard on yourself, Minister. Having an aspiration to protect these people and their families is almost as good as actually doing something. I mean, you'd accept aspirational safety in your home, right? Do you want to not die horribly in a house fire? Then try Scott Morrison Aspirational Fire Detector. No batteries required, it's powered by hopes and dreams. Hopes and dreams not guaranteed to detect smoke or fire. The Scott Morrison Aspirational Fire Detector. It may not work, but it's the thought that counts. And while Mr Morrison has an aspiration for safety and would definitely prefer that I not die in a house fire, his spokesperson wants us to know this whole Manus Island thing isn't his fault. The government inherited a facility on Manus Island that had been rushed by the previous government. Yes! So everyone who's up in arms about the immigration issue, just calm down. It's not the immigration minister's fault. Yeah! Shut your whiny mouths, you dick knobs. Morrison didn't break your precious island. It was broken when he got there. And since rushing into things caused the problem, Morrison didn't want to make things worse by fixing it up in a hurry. Now, what should the government do here? I mean, make Manus Island safer or stop sending people there? No, Tom, what Manus Island needs is a rebrand. Since a lot of these asylum seekers will go back to those war zones they hope to never call home again, developing their own aspirations for safety might not be such a bad thing after all. Safety. Mmm, we all crave it. But for some of us, those cravings can get a little bit out of hand, can't they? That's why we at the Manus Island Health Farm will help cleanse away those pesky little hopes and cravings, crushing your spirit back to health until you rehabilitate by resorting to the riots and violence you fled in the first place. <laughs> Here you will be looked after by PNG security staff in the incident response teams who reportedly will have been trained for probably three days. That's because we want you to enjoy the luxury of a poorly run facility by providing staff with less intensive training than a certificate three in fitness. Worried about exclusivity? Don't worry. We have no proper procedure in place to count the number of asylum seekers in the centre, giving you the cramped conditions no one should be made to live under. So if you can live in unlivable conditions, then any war-torn country should be okay. 
Manus Island Health Farm. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. See, Tom, it's all about perspective. I mean, another fix for Manus could be that we send any politician accused of corruption there for a little offshore processing. And we'll see how long it takes for that aspiration of safety to become a reality. Yeah, right. What? Manus Island? I thought I was going to a white collar prison. Clay tennis courts and all those hotties from Orange is the New Black. Mm. Foxtel! Afraid not. Good night. <laughs>